What if you truly could have eyes in the back of your head? Would not multitasking be so much easier with one or more extra arms and hands? Both have been achieved with some frogs. Perhaps you could grow back a leg or arm lost in an accident, the result of disease or deformity. How about an extra head? Could you really put up with yourself 24-7? As man goes into space, might we breed people without legs, useless in zero gravity? Since Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Williams, along with Watson and Crick, discovered the structure of DNA, we've all been taught this was the blueprint for biological entities. We're led to believe that what we are results from a computer program laid out in a molecular string of nearly three million pieces. This interpretation well appeals to mankind's penchant for both determinism and fatalism. Popular science programs and high school teachers either do not know the whole story or feel it must be dumbed down in order to demonstrate a point. Perhaps this approach appeals to our need for the absolute. The name of this podcast, Science or Fiction, is meant to prize certainty from the cold, dead hands of the Academy. The question of nature versus nurture must be as old as man himself, yet so often we act opposite to what our eyes and ears will tell us. We only have to look at royal lines, politicians, or academia to see the contradictions. Offspring may look similar to their parents, but upbringing and gene interactions by no means guarantee a carbon copy. Add to that the inbreeding among royals and other self-appointed elite demonstrates the weakness in body and mind, which inevitably result. The prince is often a fool. The son or daughter getting into Harvard or West Point, riding their parents' coattails, may be a moron. We know this to be the case throughout our thousands of generations, but so little is known what can happen with a single generation, or as we'll discuss, within a single body. Again, our concept of evolution is distorted by the popular science programs. The language used in evolutionary change is either careless or misleading. It's as if we're to believe that one bright sunny day, some mammals waded out into the surf to become whales or dolphins. The true meaning of Darwin's ideas are lost at that point. In the Soviet Union, a state-sponsored scientist by the name of Lysenko concluded that those in Russia within a single generation might alter their DNA to become the new Soviet man, the perfect cog in the state machine. Backed by legislation in the Politburo, this declaration became true by law. The same attitudes exist in those wishing to imprison what they call climate deniers. There is no science to back Lysenko and there is no science to back the climate alarmists. Returning to biology, we still have a lot to learn regarding cell differentiation. Just how is it determined what a new cell grows up to be? Every cell within an organism has the same DNA, yet multicellular organisms have a great variety of cells, including nerve, skin, heart, muscle, tendon, and the various organs, and more. Each type originally developed from a single fertilized egg. We marvel at how a parasite went from egg to chest buster to alien in the movies, but is our development and that of all plants and animals less remarkable? In plants, we get roots, stems, leaves, flowers, or cones than seeds or spores. Microbes may divide on their own. Animals begin from one cell to form all the functions our bodies need with a variety of tissues. So if all cells have the same DNA, then what makes two cells right next to each other develop differently? Clearly, there are environmental factors controlling the process and order. Those factors consist largely of proteins and enzymes made possible by the very same DNA. Again, this sounds like a chicken and egg problem. How does the DNA know which enzymes or how much messenger RNA to produce? 
Most likely, the direction for each cell's DNA has to do with what is in immediate contact with that cell, i.e. what chemicals or potentials are in contact with the cell membrane. What is directly outside of the cell has a strong bearing on reactions occurring inside. One driver would be the inside walls of a seed or the amniotic fluid surrounding the egg cells. Eventually, a developing organism has multiple cells. It is the makeup of the environment next to that one about to divide, influencing its future. Environment also extends to the world at large. This brings questions such as, does a seed germinate at all, or will an egg hatch in salt water versus fresh water? There are instances where a Lysenko-type transformation will occur, not in the DNA, but how the DNA is expressed. This is the case for the locust. Every locust begins as one of 10 species out of thousands or grasshoppers, usually ending its life as a solitude-loving bug. They may be stimulated by an overpopulation of their fellows and weather, which brings about behavioral and visible changes. Until the 1920s, grasshoppers and locusts were thought to be a different species. After generous rains, which produce an overabundance of food and an overpopulation of grasshoppers, there could be a severe drought. The forage is needed for all those insects so they may mate and complete their life cycle. The crowded condition of the grasshoppers, plus an overproduction of serotonin, causes them to change color from their normal state to brown with growth in the wings. Then, contrary to their solitary nature, they swarm together and migrate in search of food. Grasshoppers usually live out their lives in one place, so this Jekyll and Hyde behavior is both notable and tremendously destructive. We have become accustomed to the idea that our bodies are governed by hormones, enzymes, and proteins, exercising their complicated feedback mechanisms. The changes of behavior brought on by social conditions in locusts or rats is more disturbing. Conclusions based on rats or primates are often compared directly to human beings. We should be open to other influences as well. How many feel rejuvenated by some added ozone or stimulated by music or smells? Do we really know how acupuncture or its electrical analogs work? Lesser known than the chemical influences on biology or the electrical. Dr. Michael Levin, now at Tufts University, has been demonstrating this for over 20 years. In an early experiment, he ordered an imaging test on a half dozen chick embryos on the threshold of organized development. He was amazed at his initial results. Electrical charges rendered in yellows and reds lay across the cells in patches left to right, clearly guiding the way. Levin sat back and blinked. He had found unmistakable evidence of embryo cells telling each other left from right via electricity. Levin and others claim that tiny bioelectric signals surging through and among our, our cells act as an instruction to kickstart gene expression. These signals point cells in the right direction as they start to grow in various tissues and organs which influence the shape and function of the body. To accomplish this, Levin alters the most infinitesimal of passages. Embedded in the membrane of each cell are hollow proteins known as ion channels. Charged molecules, or ions, surge through these pathways, entering and exiting cells and changing polarities across the membrane and voltage gradients, or the difference in voltage across the body. Tiny gates inside the channels control flow, opening and closing based on certain signals. When enough gates open, Ions flood the cell and change its charge. The cell passes information to its neighbors through another group of gated proteins called gap junctions. Utilizing such microscopic tools as neurotoxins, Levin controls these channels, flooding them with ions or shutting them off. By this means, creatures may be created which nature never designed 
and some might ethically question. Changing electric potentials goes to a more fundamental level than concentrations of complex proteins. It is the relative charges which allow molecules or ions to pass or stimulate their production and or destruction. In the case of flatworms or planaria, if one cuts off the head, the creature will grow a new one, and similarly with the tail. But if a positive potential is applied at the tail cut, then a second head is grown. By applying the appropriate voltage gradients, frogs have been stimulated to grow extra limbs, complete with articulating bones and digits. In addition, completely formed and functional eyes have been grown in the backs of frogs, attaching themselves to the central nervous system. Control systems in our body statistically are extremely precise with redundancies for preventing errors. We have enzymes for exposing specific genes and other enzymes following to correct any duplication errors in our DNA. Nonetheless, there are anomalies in nature brought about by accidents in chemistry, cosmic rays, and the like. What Dr. Levin's work has uncovered is more than one cell influencing another. His experiments demonstrate that bundles of cells, whether in a blastocyst or harvested from a frog's skin, have an intelligence and means of communication never before suspected. Though the group of cells has no brain, they act collectively. This action directs how new cells will develop and even possesses memory. Dr. Levin is able to image flashes in electric potential, which appear to communicate across and within multi-celled groups. In further experiments with flatworms, tails were removed with the stimulation for growing a new head as before. These worms may be cut into as many as 200 sections, which will all generate a new worm, rather like the brooms in The Sorcerer's Apprentice. Worms with two heads have both of them cut off. But now, when they regenerate, we get new worms with two heads. This demonstrates a sort of cellular memory previously unknown. Flatworms have a tremendous regenerative capability to the point where they are essentially immortal. Though they possess multiple organs and even a brain, they seem to be able to reproduce any of those needed for a complex organism. In addition, groups of cells were created with mixtures of frog cell types. Without brains or other stimuli, the cells would reform and regrow into something which still resembled a frog. Skin cells from a frog grew and adapted cilia normally present on the surface for redistributing excretions there. These were adapted by a small group of cells for use in locomotion. The resulting creature would then swim and explore its environment. Amphibians are known for being quite malleable in this respect. In some instances, female frogs have been known to lay fertile eggs when no male frogs were present. Some salamanders also have this ability. The question, naturally, is can this research be applied to human beings? It has already been shown that by applying voltages to knitting and regrowth of broken bones can be accelerated. Applying a potential to acupuncture needles also has beneficial effects. There are a tremendous number of unknowns when it comes to our bodies or our minds control over them. As far as I know, no one can explain the placebo effect or how some yogis can endure extreme pain, heat, or cold. Now there is evidence for a kind of innate cellular intelligence requiring no nerve cells at all. Access to this layer may come through the mind or by artificial means in the laboratory or possible treatment. As mentioned, complete and functional frog's eyes have been grown on the backs of frogs and tadpoles. Though it is doubtful most people would want an actual third eye, this may be a way to grow one using one's own DNA in case of injury. Perhaps other organs such as hearts, kidneys, or livers could also be reproduced. This could eliminate the need for tissue matching and drugs for suppressing the immune system. The key is in deciphering the codes our body's cells use to communicate with each other. If this could be cracked, there are many places to apply this technology. Cells could be programmed to seek out and destroy cancers or to regrow 
damaged nerves and reestablish pathways for Alzheimer's patients. The cellular software is no doubt complex, but possibly articulating arms, legs, hands, and feet could also be reground. 